Pizarro. One key reference to all Bible predictions or personal expectation has to do with the budding of the fig tree. Matthew 24, verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. I used to believe that it pertained to the state of Israel. Then I thought it pertained to nothing. But now I think it pertains to the 144,000. The Jews today are more like the cursing of the fig tree. Matthew 21, verse 19. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee hence forward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. The Jews in Israel are also withering away. You may not notice it, but the Bible predicts its destruction. You can be sure that it will cease to be a nation after the fall of Jerusalem, set for a future date. But through their fall, does that mean all Jews are cursed? No, no way. There is a remnant that will be saved, and they are the 144,000. Let's look at another verse in Isaiah 66, verses 7 and 8. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Now what does this mean? We are watchers, and yet do we not understand Isaiah 66, verses 7 through 8? What does that mean? A nation shall be born at once. Everybody gets the part about the man-child being Jesus, but they become confused about the birth of a nation. What say John Wesley? He made a remark. He says the verse has to do, well, here's his quote. For as soon as the voice of the gospel put the church of the Jews into a travail, in Christ and the apostles' time, it presently brought forth. Wesley missed the fact that the Jews who are always in travail has not yet given forth a nation under Christ. Eliot's commentary for English readers is pretty close to the truth. Verse 8, he talks about, Shall the earth be made? Better shall a land be made to travail? The usually slow process of national development are contrasted with the supernatural rapidity of birth and growth of new Israel. I don't think commentaries see the whole pictures. People like to skip over seal 6 and spiritualize the 144,000. Maybe you even thought that you were of that number. Now I must say, hey, that's stupid. Now let's get back to the budding of the fig tree. I know I'm right that cursed Israel is not the budding of the fig tree. It is the 144,000. They are the blessed fig tree that will bring forth much fruit. They are the new generation of Jews that follow Jesus. They are those who will come into the promised land. They are those whom Jesus referred to as little children entering into the kingdom of God. They are the remnant of the Jews now living. They are a royal generation, a holy nation that will inherit the earth. We in the church age, on the other hand, are the terminal generation. We die and pass on, not seeing the kingdom of God in our earthly bodies. We are the rapture generation marching on before the children of Israel. We could be like John the Baptist saying, Make straight the way of the Lord. But in this case, make straight the way of the Lord and the children of Israel. But no, far too many have not seen the light and remain in darkness unto this day, not watching the true signs of the times and being caught up in much false teaching. Jesus did not come this Pentecost. The time is not yet right. He said, Matthew 24, verse 34, Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. We have been passing away in our generation and continue to do so. It is the generation of the 144,000 that will be under a seal of protection that will not pass away until all things are fulfilled. 
Not one of them, not one hair of their head, not one scrape of the knee shall befall them until their generation sees the fulfillment of God. Now what is our part in this day of grace? Well, we must carry on with the gospel of Jesus Christ and be prepared to give up our lives. Don't forget this verse from seal 5. Revelation 6, verse 11. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. The martyrs were crying for vengeance, and God said to rest a little until more died the death of martyrdom. There is a quota to be made. Are you willing to fill up God's quota? If not, we might be waiting a long time for judgment to begin. The rapture, I believe, happens at the time of wrath. Notice that God did not say, rest a little until the gospel is preached throughout the world. Now look at these famous quotes about martyrdom. The blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. A variant translation. As often as we are mown down by you, the more we grow in numbers. The blood of Christians is the seed. Another common translation is, The blood of the martyrs is the seed of Christians. I now make a new quote. The blood of the martyrs will usher in the kingdom of God. It's time to take out our Fox's Book of Martyrs and begin to live in anticipation of giving our lives for Christ. Do we really want to die in a rest home or in a glorious departure with the glory of praise on our lips? Dying for Jesus is such an honor. Well, this is Larry Zorro. Take care. God bless. See you.